It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 311, entitled This Year's Weekly WordPress. It was recorded on Monday the 14th of October 2024. My name's Nathan Wrigley and today I am joined by Remka Stavris, by Tim Nash and by Birgit Pauli Hack. We're going to talk about WordPress and there sure is a lot to talk about. Caveat emptor, we do try and steer away from the drama, although we get into the stories there, get into some of the bits and pieces about ACF and WP Engine. We do try to skirt away from that, but the top of the show is mainly about that and then we move on to other things. So we talk about forking WordPress, about ACF, about the checkbox on the WordPress.org website login page. And then we get into the WordPressy stuff, WordPress 6.7 beta 2, about Gutenberg 19.4 and all of the updates over there, about the fact that WordPress 6.7 is about to drop and we need your help testing it, and all of the nice new features that are in there. The developer blog gets a mention. Hero Press also gets a mention, and congratulations for turning 10. WooSesh is coming around the corner. The WordPress Accessibility Day just happened, and some people have got some things to say about that. Nice, I think. We have a new executive director, and we get into that story as well. And then AI, plugins around AI, the 10th anniversary of Jeff Starr's endeavors, and a whole lot more. And it's all coming up next on This Week in WordPress. This episode of the WP Builds podcast is brought to you by GoDaddy Pro the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24-7 support. Bundle that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. Find out more at go.me forward slash WP Builds. And by Bluehost. Redefine your web hosting experience with Bluehost Cloud. Managed WordPress hosting that comes with lightning fast websites, 100% network uptime, and 24 7 priority support. With Bluehost Cloud, the possibilities are out of this world. Experience it today at bluehost.com forward slash cloud. And by Omnisend. Do you sell your stuff online? Then meet Omnisend. Yes, that Omnisend, the email and SMS tool that helps you make 73 bucks for every dollar spent. The one that's so good, it's almost boring. Hate the excitement of roller coaster sales? Prefer a steady line going up. Try Omnisend today at omnisend.com. And by Memberful. Building a membership website? Check out Memberful. Memberful allows you to easily add gated content, private member spaces, payment collection, and more to your WordPress website. Get started for free at memberful.com forward slash WP Builds. That's M E M B E R F U L dot com forward slash WP Builds. <laughs> Hello. It's uh, <laughs> This Week in WordPress, episode number 311. And I've already got a title for it. It's called The Week Though Nothing Happened At All. There's okay. no show here. Thank you all for being um, here. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Uh, <laughs> take, take it easy. No, uh, quite a bit happened, but I'm going to get to that in a moment. Um, let's first of all do our sort of round-robin introductions to all of the different people who we've got here. Um, first up, where shall I go first? Let's go for Remkus first, because he's, right, he's just where my eyes landed. How are you doing, Remkus? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't know how I'm going to be in 90 minutes time, but for now, I'm, I'm I'll all right. Ask again. I'll ask again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Remkus, uh, let me just find my mouse. Where's it gone? Okay. Let's here go. Go. Let's go. Uh, Remkus, hopefully I've got your uh, updated bio. If I get halfway through it and it's not the updated one, just tell me to stop. Um, Remkus. Okay, okay. Remkus is a WordPress performance specialist and co-founder of Scandly, which is a WordPress site health monitoring service. He loves building fast and scaling websites. And next to that, he's also a content creator with the Within WordPress newsletter, which I apparently crib. You'll find out about that in a moment. Uh, and he also produces a podcast over there. Remkus has been very active in the WordPress community for over 15 years as a co-founder of WordCamp Europe, 
and WordCamp Netherlands. Was that the right bio? Uh, probably. I don't know. <laughs> okay, good, good. That's great. I mean, uh, but go check it out. Go check out. Go Google Scanfully, S-C-A-N-F-U-L-L-Y, and also within WordPress, and uh, go and subscribe to all the different things that Remcus is up to. Um, next one is uh, Tim Nash, who's just dropped an email into my inbox. How are you doing, Tim? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, random muttering email. Unfortunately, it arrived just at the moment when I was kind of getting ready for this show, so I haven't had a chance to uh, to check oh, that out. One of nice, calming things. There is no <laughs> drama in whatsoever. Okay, good. I like to hear it. Right. Um, Tim's bio literally starts with the following words. It says, deep breath, Nathan. Okay, so... <laughs> Let's see where this goes. Right. Oh, I see, because it's long. Right, right, right. I'm Got it. Okay. right now. Yeah, okay. Ready? <gasps> Here we go. Tim Nash is the managing director of Tempered Limited, a UK-based uh, limited company that trades under the brand name Tim Nash. Oh, here we go. Under the brand name Tim Nash. Tim Nash is the person who is here, is legally distinct from the Tim Nash, the brand which provides security consultancy, <laughs> the open source content management system, WordPress. Tim Nash, the person who owns timnash.co.uk, has been involved in the open source community surrounding WordPress for a very long time time he writes a newsletter timnash.co.uk forward slash newsletter which is distributed through tempered limited account but whose sign up form is on the site timnash.co.uk which we have already stated is owned by tim nash the person not the tempered limited trading as tim nash good grief you really thought about this <laughs> Finally, Tim Nash, the person, may or may not be the brand. I'm not entirely sure at this point. It may or may not be affiliated with WP Builds, where he recently did a couple of podcasts. You should check them out. <laughs> Tim Nash, the person, not the brand. Thanks you. Thanks you for not confusing him with a brand or a lawyer. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to have a moment. <laughs> Is that all clear? <laughs> yeah, I really, I really got it. I have to read that again. I think a bit later. Anyway, that's Tim there or there. I don't know which one of them is Tim, frankly, anymore. Yeah, that one. That one. There we go. Okay, so there's Tim. I appreciate that. Humor is what we need in these in these dark times. Um, and we're also joined by <laughs> beat that big. Uh, we're also joined by big it Pauli Hack. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I came back from a, a group hug in uh Rutkin Cosworth, so I'm Oh, good. I saw you with uh, uh, Birgit Olsen, and yes. uh, and I've only ever, I think I've only ever seen you two in like in the flesh on a on a screen like this. It's nice to see the two Birgits, and I think you wrote the Birgit and the other Birgit or something like that, which was kind of yeah, nice. It was Birgit's first, yeah. yeah. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah. Anyway, here we go. Birgit Pauli Hack is the publisher of Gutenberg Times, a site with news around the WordPress block editor and beyond. She hosts regular Gutenberg Live Q&As on YouTube and hosts the Gutenberg Changelog podcast. Birgit has been contributing to the WordPress open source uh, project since 2014 and contributes now full-time, sponsored by Automatic. Whoa. Anyway, welcome, the three of you. And um, hopefully you. this show goes without too much incident. There, is, there are many pitfalls along the way in life, and, uh, and I fear that I've put one in your path today. But some caveats. But before we get to those caveats, let's have a quick look at the live chat. Uh, if you would like to join us, honestly, it makes the show so much better if people contribute. And the best way to do that is to head here. Um, you can see Remkus is, is almost like holding it there. Look at that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, go on. Oh, nearly. Um, wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Once more, wpbuilds.com forward slash live. If you end up there, then you've got a couple of options if you want to comment. The YouTube comments are embedded on the right on a desktop or beneath on a mobile. And you need to be logged into Google. Yeah, he's got it. Look at it, the whole breath right thing. Um, and if you don't fancy being logged into Google because you've got a position about that, that's fine. You can use the, the chat widget, which is embedded inside the video. Top right of the video, I think it's in a little black button. It says live chat or something like that. Go in there, put your name in. And um, the platform that we use, which is called Wave, presumably they'll get some knowledge about you, but maybe just your IP address or whatever. So feel free. Put your bits and pieces in there. That would be great. Okay, who have we got? So we are being joined today by Courtney Robertson, joining in with a hot mug of tea. Uh, Tammy Lister is a tea influencer. <laughs> uh, please, 
Yeah, I, I still have the kit. Well, the kittens, puppies, and uh, sheep video, but I don't know if I'm going to deploy it. I don't know if we've got any bombs to deploy on this week. We will see. Uh, Thanksgiving uh, to friends in Canada, apparently. Okay, there you yes. go. I didn't know that. Um, and Tammy List is hopping in to say it's chai latte with a splash of vanilla and oat milk. Okay, so we've got two things that happen now. Apparently, we not only get the weather forecast, we now get tea and coffee updates as well. So this is great. This is all going in the right direction. <laughs> well, Andrew, Andrew love the brand. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, don't mention the brand. W um, T. What is this? What now? What is tea? Yeah, it's this warm brown stuff that doesn't taste like coffee that they drink in the UK, and you have to deploy the finger. The little, the little pinky finger has to come out, and you drink it. Uh, Andrew says it's going to be tough. No, Andrew, this will be a breeze. All you do is ignore the weird stuff uh, and do it that way. No, we'll try to tackle some of it. Uh, Tim saying that he drinks Yorkshire tea, and apparently Andrew says it's the only real tea. I'm on water, just in case anybody cares. There you go. And uh, Marcel is joining us. Marcel Boatsman. Hey, old fresh bottle of water next to me. Legs on desk. Oh, nice. That's something we should do one week. Everybody with their legs on the desk. See how that... No, no, Remkus, no. No. Oh, God. Okay. All right. It's, it's not a good look. <laughs> but put the legs away. Uh, <laughs> Tim Wilmot. <laughs> no, Tim Wilmot says, hi. T, Yorkshire, not tepid. Not Tim. That about sums us up, doesn't it? T Yorkshire tepid. There you go. Uh, we've got a few waves and a few highs. Ben, I don't know where Ben is right at this minute, but he's, he hails from ben. the Philippines. Um, yeah. So if you're joining us from there, appreciate it. It must be like crazy o'clock in the morning. Wait, something happened. No, Jess, no, nothing happened. Kathy's joining us. Uh, good morning, eating my yogurt with, a f <laughs> with not a fork this morning. Is that a reference to something? Um, <laughs> And then here we go. At last, normality has returned because Peter Ingersoll is telling us about the weather in Connecticut. Six degrees centigrade, 43 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's rainy. Nice to see so many smiley, happy people. Right, we need more of that, don't we, at the minute? Smiling. So uh, everybody smile or else. <laughs> um, That's halfway, <laughs> halfway through Remkus's bio. Will take an hour. Okay. And there's, where, where's loads? Honestly, I can't get through it all. I do apologize, everybody. But we're joined by Marcus Burnett. Very nice. We're joined by James Kemp. We're joined by Atif, uh, by Max and Reese and a few other. I'm sorry, I, I can't keep up. James, hi there. Hi there, hi there, hi there. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I can't keep up. But there we go. So it is. It is sad that I have to begin any episode with some caveats, but I'm going to. And it, it's not really sad. I'm just inoculating our guests, really. So you know what's going on. If you are, if you've got any any ears to the ground in the WordPress space, you know that there's stuff that is fairly difficult to talk about. There's opinions over here, and there's opinions over here. And we're just going to stay away from all that, right? The, the plan is I'm going to do this little slot at the beginning, just me, where I say what has happened. If you've got an opinion on it and it, and it involves you being impolite or calling somebody out, please don't bother. Just don't bother. Just go and find somewhere else to shout it. X is a fabulous platform if you want to be angry. Just go over there and do it. It's really wonderful for that. Um, but not here. Let's keep it nice and polite. Honestly, I feel like a school mom, and I'm, I apologize for that. But the idea is to keep it nice and uh, polite. If you've got an opinion and you can do that politely, feel free. Dive in. But if you sense your, your anger rising, then uh, don't. Uh, you know, just put a, put a lid on it and do it somewhere else. The other thing to say is these guests, it's totally up to them what they want to contribute to. I have no idea what the proclivities of their situation is, whether or not they are allowed to say things or not allowed to say things. So if they want to, they can chime in. If they don't want to, that's utterly fine by me. Uh, so there we go. There's the rules of the road. And with that, <clears throat> here we go. Right, first thing, bit of self-promotion. This is WP Builds. This is our website. We do this each week. But just to let you know that a couple of things happening over here. The first one is that we have our Black Friday page. If you want to get on our Black Friday page and you've got a product or service, then feel free, just sort of scroll down here and you can click this add a deal button and you'll go to a form and there you can add a deal. It's totally free. 
Um, and then you'll be in this list where you can search and filter. There's a bunch of people that have done that already. You can see it's sort of hotting up. Typically, by Black Friday, there's about three or 400 things on there, something like that. And the way we make this work is we offer these little advertising spots at the top. And you can see that uh, Gravity Forms and WS Form have taken us up on that offer so far. If you're a business in the WordPress space and you would like to go pride a place on that, click this Get Started button. Um, and there's three slots, two of which have gone at the top. And then there's these slightly smaller ones down here. So if you fancy doing that, wpbuilds.com forward slash black, or just hit that button there at the top of our website. The other thing to say is a big thank you to our sponsors who keep the lights on over here. Uh, real big thanks to GoDaddy Pro, Bluehost, OmniSend, and Memberful. Thank you so much for helping the podcast keep the lights on. That's really, really great. And the, the only other thing to add is I did a podcast this week uh, with uh, Matt Lau from Mindspawn. And if you're into e-commerce, but e-commerce in a slightly different way. You know how on your phone now you've got your digital wallet and you can pay for things just by putting your fingerprint in? That's what Mindspawn does for digital products. And it's kind of an interesting offer. So go and check that out as well. All righty, here we go. Uh, you have to say this slowly. And I'm not going to say why, but I'm going to say the word forking, okay, is beautiful. So this came, uh, this was Matt Mullenweg, 10th of October. And the context of this uh, will become clear in a moment if you haven't seen this so far. But uh, WordPress itself was a fork of a, of a previous project called B2 or Cafe Log. And WordPress grew out of that. It was uh, forked initially by um, Mike Little and uh, Matt Mullenweg. And then the whole community has been sort of, you know, playing with that fork of WordPress or, or that software ever since then. And the idea with the, with the license that WordPress ships is that everybody can fork WordPress and turn it into their own variant of it. And a couple of, couple of name drops, Classic Press did it in 2018, and we've got some new players doing it right now for reasons which I'm sure are obvious to everybody. Free WP, and then there's one here called Aspire Press and Open Press, which it says is not a fork. But anyway, I think Matt wanted to get out there and say, we're okay with people forking things. And that leads us to this story. So a little bit earlier in the week, um, the ACF plugin, which is on the WordPress.org repo, I mean, it's fabulously popular. I think millions is the right word, like a couple of million installs. It allows you to um, add loads of metadata. It basically allows you to take your WordPress install, your vanilla install, and kind of turn it into a, in air quotes, a proper CMS, all sorts of amazing functionality. Um, it was originally designed by uh, and built by Elliot Condon. He's been on this podcast several times, actually. And uh, an amazing product that he grew. The support burden for that, I think, grew too much for him. So he sold it initially to Delicious Brains, who then subsequently sold it to WP Engine. And now you can see where the story goes. WP Engine are the current custodians of ACF. And at some point during the week, um, the, the ACF version on WordPress.org uh, altered and it, it, it disappeared and it got a new name. And its new name is Secure Custom Fields. And at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, fine, the name has changed. So what? Well, there is a bit of a so what. And the so what is, is as follows. The, the plugin has been taken over. Uh, and I'll read it here. So on behalf of the WordPress security team. So this is, I think, forgive me if I've got this wrong. This is a quote from Matt Mullenweg. Um, on behalf of the WordPress security team, I am announcing that we're taking, we are invoking point 18 of the plugin directory guidelines and are forking advanced custom fields into a new plugin, which is going to be called Secure Custom Fields or SCF for short. It has been updated to remove commercial upsells and fix a security problem. And then there's a screenshot here of uh, section 18. I'd never heard of any of these sections, frankly, because I'm not a plugin or theme developer. But here they are. And the ones which sort of seem to, I guess, fit in section 18 were uh, the follow following to disable or remove any plugin from the directory, even for reasons not explicitly covered by the guidelines. That seems like a catch all phrase for kind of we can do what we like to anything. I guess, something like that. And then to make changes to a plugin without developer consent in the interest of public safety. So if you were in the your WordPress install and you had ACF from the repository installed and you updated it, uh, it, would, it would update to SCF 
So they forked it, but they kept the same slog, meaning that the, it's not like this is a, a separate version of ACF, which has just got a new name. It, it is now ACF. They've literally sort of taken it over. Um, and obviously here, uh, Matt is outlining why that is in, in his uh, view, why that's okay. And the the backlash from the community was pretty quick. Um, lots of people sort of saying it feels like you've basically just sort of hijacked a plugin. You've used the same slug and so on. Again, caveats. I'm not trying to paint my side of any story. I'm just trying to raise what's going on. And this article on the WP Tavern, which is entitled ACF Plugin Fork to Secure Custom Fields Plugin, lists out exactly what happened as far as uh, Jolzner is concerned and then goes into a bunch of tweets, the reaction from WP Engine, who I guess it would be fair to say feel that the, the plugin has been kind of usurped from them, taken from them, and uh, they feel you know that this wasn't the normal way of going about and doing things. And then you get the, the reaction from the community, and there's a bunch of tweets, which I'm not going to read out. So that's a pretty big story in the sense that I don't know of anything like this that has happened in our community before. So I'm gonna stop talking about it there. I'm gonna just offer it to our panelists. If they wanna drop in, that's all cool. If not, I'll just go on to my next bit. Okay, ready. In which case I will go on to my next bit. So that you can <laughs> see that those two stories are combined. You got the forking story from Matt, uh, which was there. And then you've got this, uh, sorry, I'm modeling things up there. There we go. Then we've got the ACF story as well. Okay. Now, a another thing which happened this week, which uh, was new to me at least, this may have happened before, but I've certainly not seen it, is that if you were to trying to, if you were trying to log into WordPress.org, uh, typically username, password, and maybe there's a checkbox or something on there normally to sort of say that you, I don't know, you agree to terms and conditions. I can't remember. But um, there appeared a new checkbox um, and here, here we can see what it said. Um, I am not affiliated with WP Engine in any way, financially or otherwise. And my understanding is that without actually checking that box, the, the login was, was unavailable to you. It, it wasn't like this was an option. I think you had to tick it uh, in order to pass through that gateway. And at some point, there was a, an actual link to uh, a story. Uh, this, I think, has now gone. Um, but that was listed there as well. So you basically had to say that you were not, and the words here are affiliated with WP Engine in any way, financially or otherwise. And there was a lot of consternation in the community because people who are not legal, I'm not at all, uh, wanted to know what affiliated meant. Um, the confusion around that, because obviously, you know, if you are ticking this box and you are in some way affiliated, I don't know, the examples went like this, you know, I've got a plugin, uh, I use their hosting, I have a client who uses their hosting, you know, you can imagine all the different scenarios. And so I think, again, it was fair to say that there was a lot of consternation about this, because people felt that this was new, a little bit unusual, and not something that's seen before. And I think it's fair to say that the combination of these two stories have left many people questioning whether or not they wish to be part of the community. I've seen some people who have left uh, and saying, you know, I'm done with WordPress, et cetera, uh, and pointing out that a combination of these two or one of the two things was enough to sort of tip them over the edge there. And obviously that's a great shame. The, the other thing to say is, it's gone out of my head, the other thing to say. Anyway, there we go. That was that story. Anything to add to that? Can I just go back one story and just Please. say that the bit you missed when you were talking about the uh, backlash was, I think, uh, it's fair to say most of the backlash wasn't about forking. It was about forking. Um, and that this was perhaps not what most people would describe as, as a fork. I think everybody who is rational realizes that the WordPress repository's guidelines say, yeah, they can do whatever they like. Um, as do most, if you ever read any legal terms, when you sign up and deposit your code wherever, GitHub, whatever it is, ultimately there's going to be this little paragraph that says, no, 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 we can do what we like. So that's, but the taking of the slug 
and therefore keeping the reviews, keeping the name, keeping the SEO benefits, keeping the users. Wouldn't, uh, if you said that outside of the current events and said, this is a fork, people would look at you and go, is it? Is that what we used to, so it's, it's, it's not what we used to call forks. Can, can I just, can I just explain that then? So yeah. if you, if you were to go to the WordPress repository and correctly find a week ago, correctly find the advanced custom fields, free repository plugin, it would obviously be bound with, um, you know, all of the history and the reviews and all of that. And the, the thing here is because they've, um, because they've taken the slog, then all of those reviews are now bound to this new fork, right? Is that, that's it? Have I got that about right? Yep, yeah, but you've also now got a different entity yeah. managing this. So, okay. so everybody who updated overnight went from WP Engine, who were the custodians and are the custodians of ACF, to a new product, SCF, which is WordPress.org. For most people, who actually manages the plugin doesn't matter to them. But there aren't going to be companies who literally have it written in their paperwork that says, we have a, um, perhaps not a contract with uh, DP Engine, but we have, as a, one of the people who manage this software, they're, na they're named in a piece of paper. Now, okay, it might be quite easy to swap over a piece of paper and change the names, but there was no option. You didn't know what was going to happen. If you, as someone who has spent 10 years pushing automatic updates, this is a very scary thing because now somebody else is managing that and it is a different organization. And that whether it's a better organization or whether they have, it was justified, all of that's irrelevant. It simply is now a different organization. And this was happened to end users without their consent. And that's, I think, a part of the problem because with automatic updates, and with the manual update process, you couldn't see what was going to happen. It said, there is an update available to advance custom themes. When you clicked it, you became secure custom themes. Okay. Now, Sorry. that, again, is uh, there was no consent given on those two points. And that could prove problematic for certain organizations. Big, did, you, did I hear you wanting yeah. to? Um, so if I understood this whole problem correctly, it is that if you want to, um, so WP Engine was uh, banned from .org, yeah. And yeah, that, that was, that was huge... context that I didn't put in. I forgot about that. Yeah, thank you. And, yeah. and there was a, a big um, outcry that now the plugin would be abandoned and stale because they can't update it. Now the security team has taken over that plugin and issued a security update because they found security issues or well, one issue. I'm, I'm not a security expert, but I know that you are not able to roll out an update, a security update, um, without coming it from the same slug. So right now they are kind of uh, in a, in a, uh, between a rock and a hot place if they want to keep that um, Secure. So I just wanted to put that in because that doesn't seem to be uh, known around even the most of the plugin developers that if a security issue is there and the plugin developer is not issuing that, but the security can take team takes over, then it needs to be from the same slug. Now I know also, and I saw this in a meta um, channel that. Um, People are working on on the security uh, on the meta team are working on to make it that you don't have to use the same slug. Um, so and that's code change that needs to be happen on, on on meta. But I think that's a the way forward. So it hasn't has nothing really. Well, yeah, but you can see it from any way as you want. You, but the security can. Can I just that I'm, clarify? I, I have sorry, big. Can that I you, I have clarify that, that one thing? Speak all your things. Okay. Thank you so much, Tim. <laughs> and that's all I had to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Just to clarify one thing, you can push an update as a contributor without taking over the as an organization. 
For example, the security release that was done before Secure Custom Fields was created was pushed out by a member of WordPress.org. They did that. They, no, you can was, see it. If you go into the subversion control, you can see the, the subversion entry made by that member of staff, and that was pushed out and then through. That is different to an entire organizational takeover. Now, yeah, you could yeah, argue well, there's no how do they manage that long term, and that's a very fair thing to argue. Yeah. And, but <clears throat> the argument that they had to do this doesn't hold weight because they'd already shown how they could do it. Well, the first time it was somebody from WP Engine who in that window where they were banned and then it was opened up. And then not it was the Otto. There's a different put Otto knocking around. As far as I can see, the patch was done by Otto. So okay. in this particular well, I thought that was the last one. Yeah. It anyway. might not be. Previously, it might not have been, but I, you can see WP Engine, Otto, WordPress.org. I, I think I'm going to sort of um, hijack the conversation here. So yeah, the, we're going yeah, into real no, no, yeah, it's okay. It, it's it's really fascinating and interesting. The I think really you could encapsulate this as there's a lot of people just detecting things which are just a little bit different. Let's go with that. Just you know, not not things that you've seen too much of before, and because of that, there's you know lots of fear and you you know whether or not let's say you're a plugin or a theme developer whether this may or may not be something that you need to concern yourself about, those kind of things. Anyway, the point is, that's the story. So that's that's kind of where we're at now. Um, so we had this uh, login box, which, you know, clearly pointed to the, the ongoing dispute between WP Engine and um, Automatic. Um, and then you had this uh, plugin takeover. So two kind of really fairly big stories in the course of this week. Whoops, excuse me. Let me see if I can find the other one. So we did that one. We did that one. We did that one. This must be the other one. And then I'll just end this little section where I'm sort of just speaking to the camera. Um, and then something else that happened this week was that WP GraphQL, uh, which is a, a, well, I'll just read actually. Again, this is from the Tavern. WP GraphQL, a popular plugin that provides an extendable GraphQL schema, um, is set to become a canonical plugin for WordPress or on WordPress.org. Its creator, Jason Barl has joined automatic and um and i guess the piece that paints it into this part of the podcast is the fact that you know he's an employee which is now uh, an automatician who's come from wp engine you can read all about that elsewhere anyway a canonical plugin is something which is kind of akin to uh something which is in core but you don't necessarily have to have it but it's going to get that same sort of attention to detail the, the idea being that this plugin now, if it becomes a canonical plugin, you'll be able to utterly trust updates and things like that because hopefully the, the work has been done in the background. Um, and so anyway, there are my four little bits at the top that I thought could be incendiary. And I just wanted to say what's happened. No doubt the comments have been saying, uh, you know, give, everybody's giving their opinion. I, I thank you if you've kept it polite. Uh, that's great. That would be uh, what, I'd, what I'd wish. Uh, I don't at the moment have time to go through and read them all, but has anybody got one that they've seen? Like Remkus, have you got some in there? Because you've. Um... I like the, the this last one by Jason because um, in his um, in his own uh, uh, blog post about this, he highlights that uh, uh, there will be a, a renewed focus on uh, more development time for uh, WP GraphQL, and I think that's a that's a great thing to see happening. Right. Is that a comment in our show or is that a comment on the article that we're looking at, the WP Graph? The article we're looking at, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so make of it what you will. I, I, like, honestly, I can totally see why both sides have got an, an argument in this. And, and I, f I fear that there's more to come. One of the things which has got nothing to do with the stories, but the stories are the catalyst, is it does seem to me like a bit of a shame um the 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 impact shall we say on the community like if you could just push away the stories and just read the the text which are going backwards and forwards it does seem like we've stepped into some sort of adversarial space and people that seem to be only friendly towards everybody there's now a, a few you know there's a few lines in the sand that have been drawn and and it's it's pulled out of people lines that they wish 
they'd never had to have crossed. And, and I think, I think, let's just hope that time can be a healer, and that uh, we don't have more people who are getting fed up and leaving the community. You never know. There is a possibility that in a year's time we'll look back on this. The rifts will have gone away. Well, we'll be back to something a little bit more peaceful. And those calm. of us who've been in the community for fifteen plus, almost twenty years, um, there have been WP dramas before. Yeah, um, we have lived on, um, even thrived in certain ways, you could say. But uh, I, I do want to recognize that this is a this is one of those things where you. Uh, like I'm, I'm done, done in terms of, uh, having to spend negative energy. Yeah. Um, and that, that for me, and this is not, uh, I'm purposely not voicing my opinion on uh, a public platform like this. Um, but I think it's important to, um, I saw a tweet from Syed this morning where he essentially says, if you can be kind, be kind. Uh, and I think we're starting to lose, uh, a, a lot of that perspective. So yeah, yeah. So I, I would just like to to highlight uh, that as a whole because uh, this is a very devi divisive thing, right? Um, so I many of us have friends on both sides of the argument. Uh, it's just very tough, and and you know, from a legal perspective, uh, we might n only know five percent of what's actually going on. So I just like to add that as a as a whole to the whole discussion. Well, thank, thank you, Big it. Thank you, Ramkes. Yeah. I just come come back from WordCamp Cultural, and it was really, um, yeah, very. Um, um, but as, it wasn't discouraged. It was really good to come back to people. You meet them in person. You have a relationship with them, and um, we all can talk about things. But we all know it needs to be kind. We we are all kind to each other, and we know everybody's hurting, or a lot of people are hurting. So we, we kind of um, take care of that, yeah, and um, have a meal together and talk about other things that going on in other people's lives and mm. uh, what WordPress is about. Um, and that's the community. And I'm, I'm really happy that I went, yeah, even if I was kind of uh, hesitant to do it. Yeah, no, no, I've been automatician and all. <laughs> well, one thing that I've learned, which I think probably everybody already knew, so it, it really is me being just a bit dismally on how to describe it. I don't really interact much on social media, especially X, but um, I found myself looking at the home bond. Usually I use uh, X or Twitter as, a, as an inbox, so I look at the notifications and messages tabs only, and I do literally mean only. That's all I ever use it for. Um, but this last week, I've I've found myself clicking on the home button, which I think you could just describe as the feed. And it is kind of interesting how the algorithm uh, does seem to surface stuff of a very incendiary nature. I'm digging a little bit further on all of the incendiary stuff. Behind it somewhere is is some reasonable position that could have been taken. But what I'm trying to say is if you're using social media as as the way of getting the information, it does seem it's a it's a bonfire. You know, and it, it pushes I, you into all the, oh, it's, you know, everybody hates this and just, those people hate that. And... The negative stuff. It's also yeah. the positive stuff. I mean, the, the uh, stuff okay. that is engaged highly with is the stuff that I see. Uh, there's way more negative, obviously. Yeah. Because there's way more um, voicing of negative opinions and, and, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot of sentiment going on. Most of us identify on a very personal level with this piece of software, right? So it's, mm -hmm. if you touch that, you touch your, you touch them. Um, I think perhaps now is a good time to reconsider that direct connection and see that as a role that you do and not you as a personal person being affected. I think it's a, could be an interesting uh, position for some folks. I see uh, mostly on X constantly tweeting about it. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's no longer in our hands if it ever was. Um, yeah. Again. I think that's a really interesting framing of it. And I think you encapsulated it really well there. Like the reason that like it, people throw bombs at each other because they care. And yeah. maybe it, that's something I hadn't really thought about. You know, even if somebody's like really having a go at your position, yeah. it's because they care. They're not doing it probably. Well, let's hope they're not. They're not doing it to uh, to just get a rise out of you. They're doing well, it because they they've got it a real position. Basement. Yeah, yeah. And it feels like certainly the time that I've been in WordPress, we haven't yet been faced with, with a, a a boundary quite so severe as this. Yeah. So anyway, that's the incendiary stuff which happened this week. And we've 
we've honestly done far too much time on that already. Uh, go wherever you like to go. Uh, WP Tavern's probably a good place to start, but all the, you know, just WordPress news outlets in general will give you all of the details. There's loads that's gone on this week. And, uh, but we will move on. We will press on and do other things instead that are related to the actual software itself. So uh, if you're still with us, thank you. <laughs> appreciate that. Um, WordPress 6.7 the actual code that we actually care about. Um, beta 2 is announced. And th there's nothing really for me to add into this except to say that if you are a habitual tester of WordPress software prior to its release, well, we're getting very close. Uh, November is the deadline. It's like two and a bit weeks away uh, to release WordPress 6.7. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But if you want to test it, um, now's the time. There's loads of ways of doing that. Probably the easiest way is by look clicking the link in this article where it says WordPress Playground, in other words, over here. That's a really quick, easy way to do it. If you've got a plugin or a theme or a block or anything like that, time to make sure that it's all working. So there's that. Okay, moving on. Um, I'm, I'm kind of going to throw this one at Big because this is definitely her area of expertise. So uh, this was a couple of days ago now, a few days ago. Uh, Carlos Bravo, what's new in Gutenberg 19.4? I'll just quickly scroll through and we'll take each one at a time. Uh, new right design mode. So there's now going to be, I mean, if you're looking at this on the uh, screen, that's great. You'll be able to see what I'm on about. There's new right mode and a design mode, which is going to be right here next to the inserter. Um, and what is this? Is this like focus mode? Does it just sort of strip away all the UI that you don't need? Is that what's going on? Well, well it's actually a renaming of the two uh, features that have been there before. Okay. And they were called edit and select. And it's a method that you, so if you are a keyboard, uh, a person who travels the internet via keyboard, especially the block editor, you have, um, you have two modes. One is to, um, edit, um, and then go through all the toolbar buttons, um, by tabs or to select and go from block to block to block. And um, the escape key gets you from one into the other. Um, so for those that are traveling by keyboard, that's really important. Um, for us, who, or for me, who I see a lot of things and can point the mouse to, um, those different, um, differences are not very uh, prominent uh, because it automatically detects if I wanna edit that or if I wanna select it and then go to the next uh, because mouse travels differently. Um, they are um, planning to add additional features to it, but it comes out with the zoom out mode that's already in 6.7. Yeah, we um, might see an example of that in a minute, actually. Yeah. Um, okay. So block bindings editor APIs are now public. Uh, I'll just read here, Al allows developers to use certain block binding APIs that were previously private and used only in core. And there's some additional stuff here. I should say very this article cool. is on make.wordpress.org. Remkus, you were going to say? Oh, that's very cool that the, uh, the block bindings API, you can do so many cool things with that. Give us a, just give us a nice little example. If um, you can. I, don't, I don't think I need to give an example, but I can give you a better description of what it does. It oh, allows great. you to bind whatever block you have available in your editor to another block in a way that you wouldn't, uh, like programmatically, you can build, for instance, and that this is probably the best example, you can build wonderful mega menus with it. Because uh, you can put anything you want in there. And the, that binding uh, is what is needed to be able to do that, because right now you can't. Um, but the block bindings API basically provides us with all the tools we need to, be, to build those types of uh, wonderful integrations. Um, and and then, yeah, just think um, the the types of examples that are interesting to look at is is if you have patterns and you'd like to include patterns within patterns in a in a programmatically way, or you just like to be more creative than what you are currently allowed to do, that's what this API will will facilitate you a lot in. Nice. Yeah, it also allows you to add um, custom fields to um, so. For instance, yeah. Uh, when you have custom fields, normally you would have to create a template for it and then add it to the front end. And this way you can add it to a block, uh, can add a block and then say, this binds to the text of my book review description. And then it changes um, 
it, it can automatically be on the front end. So that's a really nice thing. Yeah, Another nice. one would be if you have a recipe, yeah, all the ingredients that are in meta um, custom fields, um, you can actually then uh, combine them all in a display. Perfect. Nice descriptions there. Thank you. There's a bunch of other things on there as well uh, in under this notable highlights, but I won't go into those. Those are the two sort of main items. So that's what's happening in Gutenberg 19.4, which was uh, not that long ago. Let's quickly press on. Whoop, hopefully it'll load. Um, I did mention this last week or the week before, but because of the news, it kind of got you know hijacked basically. So just another quick one. Um, if you do still want to help, I just mentioned about beta testing, but this article gives you a comprehensive list of all of the different bits and pieces that you can help with, specifically how you can help. So it's like a, a, a how-to article of helping. And then there's a, a load of things in this here checklist, um, which really would like to be helped with. So I'm, I, I'm not going to read them all out, but it says, if you want to quickly test the update, WordPress version's compatibility with your site, please verify the following checks. So that was uh, help test WordPress 6.7. So the thorough explanation of what you can do to help. Okay, finally, some out and out darn good news. Ta -da! Um, hang on, that, that was good news. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, but, but it was kind of technical good. Yeah, all right, you're right. You are right. I'm sorry. I, uh, I, yeah, you are. You are quite right. I am. I'm sorry. I, I take that back. Okay. Uh, more good news. Here's some more good. That's it. That'll do it. Here's some more good news. Um, this is to say that the Hero Press website has uh, reached the 10 year milestone. Hero Press, if you don't know, is uh, the foundation story of this is really interesting. It's right at the beginning. I'll just read it because it is interesting. In late um, November 2024, I woke up to an email. This is Topher DeRosia, by the way, who uh, who founded this. Um, woke up to an email that would change my life. It said, what a curious email. I want you to do something great for WordPress. I don't know if that's all that was in there, but that's what it said. Uh, Topher replied, um, what is it? He wrote back. And the reply that came to that was, that's your journey to discover. Honestly, it's like you met Yoda in your email or something <laughs> like that. Um, and uh, so Topher decided Hero Press was the way to do it. Uh, it seems like, and I didn't realize this, it seems like version one of Hero Press, whatever that was, ended in failure. Uh, it says everyone walked away and it was done. I don't know if that was a, a WP drama or not. Um, but people kept emailing me and telling me to do it. And, and he did. And now Hero Press is one of those websites where you can go to and uh, receive, read um, inspiring uh, stories about people from all over the world. And it, honestly, when you go to these word camps and these events all over the place, it is nice to uh, nice to meet these people in person. But a substitute for that would be something like Hero Press. So far to date, 278 essays have been published wow. in 29 languages. That's pretty amazing. Uh, the story's coming out of oh, 66 countries um, and then more stats. 136 women, 134 men, three non-binary. Um, and there they all are. Look at that. In one hand. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, it's a room full. And um, he's obviously keen to keep this project going. But as with all things, you know, if you're making content, you'll know how this goes. There is a financial cost to all of this. And so if you have appreciated what Hero Press have done, um, Topher goes into the explanation of the kind of support that they need. And you could boil it down, I suppose. F financial help would certainly be welcome. And there's a button right here to donate. But he doesn't just say, give us your money. He it goes in to explain why. Uh, you know why why you might want to help and what those what your money would actually be helping with. So, firstly, uh, Tofa and anybody that's been connected, including all of the people who've written the articles, thank you. I read this whenever new stuff comes out, and it is really cool. I like it a lot. Anything else about this other piece of good news? I love the fact <laughs> that this seemingly started because of a spam email. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could have been really good. This just somebody there going, "I'm going to make my millions by t convincing you." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's it's uh, really that's the good part of uh, uh, WordPress. It's a community, and it's how many lives it changed, and um, just because of the journey that people take. You know, if I see what happens in Nepal or in other countries with people who take uh, on WordPress, translate it 
and then um, uh, enable other people to to use it and and have their voices heard. So um, I don't know if that counts, Elliot. He wanted to some kittens or puppies. So oh, cl click no. one of click okay, on no. one of those. Okay, so I'll just I'll give you a quick I, demo, right? Um, no, no, the... I just wanted to say, click on one of those stories, and then oh, maybe that counts as well. Okay, uh, just for those of you who want to see, you know, real cats. And... It's a brief, <laughs> it's a tiny. You've let me finish having my drink. I know, I did notice. I did, yeah, <laughs> come back from the video, and everybody's picking their nose or something like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep it on. A little bit longer next time. The cats and the kittens and all of the dogs and the sheep, they'll be coming later. Fear not. Okay, right. Okay, so there was Hero Press. Thank you uh, for the people who've contributed to that. And well done for getting to 10 years. No mean achievement, that's for sure. Okay, uh, here we go. Here's something. If you're in the southeast of the UK, seems like the perfect opportunity when I've got Tim on the call. Um, on Halloween, 31st of October, uh, Tim is going to be joining us in London at the a, a new thing that we're trying out. It's called the WPLVN Masterclass. And uh, felt like 31st of October, you know, kind of scary spookiness. Tim's going to uh, Tim's going to talk about um, auditing WordPress security like a pro. Um, it is a paid for event. You can register by clicking on that button there. It's at WPLVN.UK forward slash masterclass. The, the normal WPLDN event, which is free, will be taking place on the same day right afterwards. So, it, you know, the whole thing isn't bound up in a, a fee. But if you want to check Tim's stuff out, then, yeah, you need to register for that. What are you covering, Tim? Or haven't you decided yet? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it's, it's a, I know you've decided. <laughs> I am trying to do myself out of a job. Uh, so it is basically a, a, everybody should be doing secure site reviews, secure code reviews. A lot of people say they do it, they're not so much on the implementation side of things. And a lot of that is because there's a fear of what do I do? How should I structure this? Um, does it need to be this big formal report thing? They, they see pen tests and go, oh, how do I use that equipment? All of that. So we're covering through how to audit your site, how to define what you should be looking at, finding things and developing an action plan afterwards. But you're basically... Uh, pinching all my processes and my SOPs and you're getting those and then you're getting me to tell you how to implement them on your site. SOPs? No, it's what? Brilliant for agencies, brilliant for developers. And if you are in the Southeast and your, your bus has not got you signed up on this, uh, send them a DM, tell them to DM me and I will give them withering looks. And yeah, <laughs> nice. The withering look photograph will come your way. Remkes, you were going to add. No, I was going to say SOBs what, but the joke fell. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's happening uh, on the thirty first. So you got you got several days to sign up. Um, we're we're doing it in the centre of London near London Bridge, and the venue is it the Ibis? This one I can't remember. We've been we've been working in the um, if if you're an attendee of WordCamp in, in London. Summer. Yeah, then it's basically really, really close. Who's to that things. handsome man on the screen now, by the way? Yeah, th thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you to say. Why is he looking away from the text? That's <laughs> Oh, you got to talk to Dan, maybe, your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there it is. Check it out, wpldn.uk forward slash masterclass. Go check that out. Um, another session, another thing which is happening in the real, in the, well, I guess this is a virtual conference. It's not in the real world, unlike the last one, but not far away now is uh, WooSesh. It's a virtual conference for WooCommerce store builders designed to help grow your business. Uh, it comes around each and every year. Uh, I'm not a particular um, user of WooCommerce, so I can't really speak to what this event is like, but I know it's good. very, very popular. Is it? That's good. It's good. It's, yeah. it's been good for... A great many years like uh, there's people who build uh various different things for woocommerce and uh sharing that information uh it's 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 pretty much uh, gold nice like it'd be it'd be it'd be uh not the smartest thing if you were to ignore this one okay that's, that's and, a and, great and way if, of, yeah and, I like you know, it. if you're building anything with woocommerce at any time then this is the thing to start uh, paying attention to because there's there's Lots of people are going to share very beautiful ways of how to extend and work with WooCommerce. Nice. Highly recommend. 
Great. So uh, the URL is woosesh, W-O-O-S-E-S-H dot com. And uh, it's put it in the diary, 29th to the 30th of October. And then, of course, you can do the whole trifecta, sign up for the 31st of October with Tim Nash. And you've done three days uh, on, on the ride. <laughs> I, I know. know if people can handle that, though. Oh, come on. <laughs> come if I can do it, they can do it. <laughs> you, you can do it. That's right. Um, sign up here. And it does say, I don't know what quite what this means because I don't know what the sort of structure is, but it says two days, 20 speakers, 17 sessions, infinite fun. Wow. Uh, $799 down to free. Love it. And there's a selection of the speakers that I was just showing a moment ago. So uh, some of them listening to this call as we speak. So there you go. Great. All righty. Right. Um, just want to point out that WP Accessibility Day uh, was last week. That's right, isn't it? I haven't missed a week in all of this drama. No, it was last week. And my understanding is that if you were attending in person, that is to say live, you know, it was an online event that happened over a 24 hour period, then you were able to watch um, the event, including live captions, which is pretty amazing. Um, and over here, we've got Mike Davey, who's a, um, somebody that works for Delicious Brains who's giving their commentary on that. But I just want to point out that it happened and the videos are going to become available really soon on the uh, the YouTube channel that they've got. So I, I don't really have anything to add to that other than that it happened and the videos will be coming your way. And I think, was there 24 of them? Was it one per hour? A bit like WordFest Live? I'm not entirely sure. But, 24 um, hours. There it was we... 24 hours. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. So, 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 uh, I'm not keeping an eye on the comments on this particular show. They were going too fast. Uh, okay, so James, thank you, plus the Wu Sessies, very nice. And then a whole bunch of other stuff above there, probably to do with all that. Uh, there's a really nice one from the other Birgit. The other Birgit, this one. Yeah. I remember, oh, I remember Hero Press starting and was once video interviewed for V1. Love reading all the essays and personal stories. That is nice. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okie dokie. Uh, and related to that, what you can see on the screen uh, is an article. It's, it's not really WordPress news as such, but I just thought it slotted in nicely with the WP Accessibility Day. This is uh, Digital Ally, A11Y, digitalally.com. And it's uh, an, an introduction in how to write an, an accessibility statement for your website. So I haven't um, had to do that, but I just thought that was worth throwing in there. Okay, maybe this stuff could have gone at the more towards the beginning, but here we go. If you um, if you've been following the news, Josepha Hayden Chomposi stepped down. I'm going to say ten days ago as the executive director of WordPress, and a replacement has now been sought and found. And the article that you can see here, please welcome Mary. I, I'm going to say Hubbard. I presume that's how you pronounce it. I suppose it could be Hubbard or something like that, but let's go with Hubbard. Um, and the article says, we're proud to announce that Mary Hubbard has resigned as the head. And I started reading that. I thought, okay, this is going in a strange direction. <laughs> Normally begin with those words, but um, I guess they're trying to lend some sort of credibility to the career that Mary has had. We're proud to announce that Mary Hubbard has resigned as the head of TikTok America's governance and experience as well, and will be starting as the next and uh, next executive director of wordpress.org um, on the 21st of October. So a little over a week from now. Um, it turns out that Mary has actually worked at Automatic before from 2020 to 2023 and was the chief product officer for wordpress.com. And then it says here, so she has deep knowledge of WordPress and expertise across business product marketplace program management and governance. Um, this is no reflection on Mary because I don't have any experience with Mary whatsoever. But um, what a pair of shoes to fill in Josepha Hayden Chompo C, who I just thought did a an utterly remarkable job. Um, she did, yeah, really, just yeah. quite a quite a force of nature in the best possible way. Yeah, you know, very calm and considered and thoughtful and able to sort of take on conflicting opinions and somehow out of that maelstrom managed to deliver. Um, a coherent, thoughtful response. That's I don't know how she does it. You know, you occasionally meet those people who can take two warring factions, if you like, and meld them together and get some sort of consensus out of it. So, uh, big shoes. But I'm, um, you know, Mary, welcome. Let's hope that that all turns out well. Anybody want to say anything? Maybe you know her. I don't know. Maybe some of you. I, I, I don't know her. Um, 
um, she comes from TikTok and automatically, and that's pretty much all that I know about her. Yeah. Well. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Big. Is uh, basically because uh, it's uh, it's not an easy time to start. No. Well, that was my thought, right? You know, like if if Josepha had stepped down in, um, I actually don't know. I don't know if Josepha has even published a piece explaining the reasons behind it, but maybe we can. Uh, Not read. reasons, but no. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm not sure goodbye. Anyway, so um, for whatever reasons, maybe they'll become public in the future. Maybe not. Don't know. But um, certainly a difficult time to begin a job at a time unlike any um, in WordPress. So I imagine Mary is going to have some fairly full hands dealing with the, the situations that are going on at the moment. Anyway, good luck. I hope it all works out. And here we go. Right. What's new for developers? Just uh, so this is Nick Tag. Nick D8 and Nick Tadlock. <laughs> now <laughs> there me. would be a there would be a force that of family nature. Of Justin Diego. <laughs> yeah. I like this idea that they merge together and there's just the two heads. Just yeah. In each other. yeah. <laughs> right. Just on one body, like uh what was that dog? Well, they, need, Cerberus. They, need, they need two lots of hands though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get double the typing speed. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So um, this is just such a relentlessly cool thing which happens each month. It's the what's new for developers, and obviously we're in the, the month of October. Uh, I'll just give you a I'll just give you a big scroll, right? I mean, there's no way I'm going to be able to pause this because it's just hundreds and hundreds of lines of of what is going on. But uh, I've just highlighted a couple of things at the top. I've talked about the block bindings API, so there's a little bit more information on that. Um, and big, it mentioned this zoom out mode, which honestly. When I heard that this was going to be a thing, I was like, I am never going to use that, but it's kind of interesting. And then I, I clicked the button and it was like, oh, actually, that's actually quite cool. And yeah, you know, I'm just, going to use it again. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> use it the once. Yeah. But it was a bit like, you know, that experience that you get with things like Figma, where you pinch and the whole UI that you've been creating just yeah. sort of, whew, there it is. And you just get to see all of it in one frame. It was like that. And it, you just got this cohesive sense of, oh, that's what I've created. Not here's the viewport. Scroll up. Here's the up. Here's the viewport again. Just a much more rich, in-depth experience. And I guess if you're creating, I don't know, complicated patterns and they stretch over a long distance, this kind of thing will be really interesting. Anybody got anything on that? Zoom out mode. Maybe it's just me that's obsessing about that. I, no, I, I'm really I, happy about it. Oh, nice. um, especially when you do want to add some some patterns and you zoom out, you can exactly uh, place them right away. Um, and kind of see how they all flow in with the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and that that's really cool. And there are um, a few navigation buttons on the left, and where you can kind of uh, on the left of the section that is. Uh, yeah. Here. Yeah, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that I mean. Um, and where you can just kind of uh, trash one of them because ah oh, that doesn't doesn't fitting. And if you try that earlier uh, with a pattern. Uh, sometimes you couldn't uh, delete it all uh, because you couldn't kind of grasp it all. But you can also move them and drag and drop them. And it's um, it's nice to, um, it improves the pattern handling um, quite a bit, um, especially when you do long landing pages. That you can just go add patterns and then move them around. So if you're looking at the screen, you can see what I'm going to read. It says the new zoom out mode is no longer experimental. So, and obviously there were a few bugs and things and it will be included in 6.7 with the click of a button. You get a zoomed out view of the editor canvas, making it easier to compose page layouts with patterns. It kind of reminds me of like an email um, builder, like, some, you know, like MailChimp or something where you can sort of see the whole thing in one go has that kind of flavor to it. And I, I wasn't expecting that I'd find it in any way useful, but but I did. <laughs> um, and then we've talked about the new uh, write and design modes. And okay, so this is also kind of interesting. So the, the drop down menu, which you're probably familiar with, close to the sort of publish button. Um, and it's got things like, you know, do you want to see it as a tablet, mobile, desktop, and what have you? Um, or you can click to open in a new tab or what have you. Well, now this is going to be extensible. So pe developers will now be able to drop in whatever custom menu item they want to add into there. So, you know, uh, the sky is the limit. I think it's going to be really cool for people who are um, do stuff like headless, for example. Mm. Stuff where it's perhaps, because I'll be honest, uh, when it comes to the preview, I just go to the visit site nine times out of ten. Yeah, after a replay, and I, I just, I, I think that's just, um, 
age. <laughs> but it's like, I just don't, it's like, I know it says that it, it, it gives me the other options, but it's like, I don't trust it unless I can see it on the page like that. So I imagine a scenario where you have a build pipeline that you might, you might even be as able to have like a whole build pipeline and they pop out the other end in the preview. That would be Oh, I see. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, a very good. Yeah. So all of those developers out there, you're going to be able to tap into that. And there's a bunch of, oh, uh, there's some really interesting stuff happening with Playground. Playground is the one click in browser WordPress experience. Um, so they've improved the website for that, but also the team is working hard on new features, including, this is cool, refreshless website deployment. So I'm guessing that, you know, as you start playing with things, it's going to update in, in the background. New query parameters for testing WordPress core and Gutenberg PIs, P, PIs, PRs. And there was also uh, persistent storage. You will have the instant, uh, each instant be, be able to add it to persistent storage, either in the browser or in a local directory on your device. And what I'm reading from that is that the site will be available to you when you come back two days later, even if you've closed the browser down, because at the minute, imagine, close the browser down, it's gone. Imagine how this now can start to become a platform to actually build apps and localized uh stuff that you would otherwise just find different ways of building but you can now just use playground yeah do all the add all the code make it sure that anybody can download and it works as you intended that's pretty sure what the direction is going there so i've used um local um which is you know i guess you need to say these things these days don't you it's a it's a wp engine uh product and it installs onto your desktop but my my understanding i don't really know how it works it's a bit of voodoo to me but my understanding is that it, all of the bits and pieces are just stored in the file structure in my case on a mac so everything i could drill down into the the finder and find yeah. that website and all of the files and what have you so is this basically akin to that you you'll point playground to okay save it there mm -hmm. You can, you can even see it a little bit better because if you look at uh, Studio from WordPress.com, yep. that is built off of the same technology. So, uh, and it'll allow you to do that in the in the in a similar fashion. Yeah. Oh yeah, Studio is the is the sort of it, it like it feels like local in that you've downloaded an yeah, app it, it's onto the type yeah. of um, a different feature set and all that, but right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that persistent nature. Yeah. I think, I think that's going to be really interesting. I, I've said that I think that playground is to iOS what the app store is, if you know what I mean? Like it, I think we're just going to suddenly have a load of people coming up with some really ingenious things. You know, WordPress is fun, the iPhone's fun, but combine the iPhone with an app store and suddenly it's like, Whoa, really fun. And I feel that's maybe what playground will be something truly amazing uh tim bigot anything on that before we move on i'm i'm a total yeah. fan of uh, playground and i have played around with a lot of blueprints to put sites together uh, or site demos with additional content and uh, wpcli kind of added to that and that's really cool because you can now create a yeah a user experience um of your plugin or of your theme that you don't have to put on a server and have to spin up 500 times to give it to your clients. You yeah. just give them the same link. Yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah. So. Really nice. And then I'm wondering if one of you can take on the heavy lifting of, of explaining to my dull brain what's going on here. So this is the view meta boxes in the iframed post editor. Just to be clear, this is the what's new for developers in October 2024. So this is kind of, you know, I, I suppose in a sense, it's like WordPress is bleeding edge in a way. Um, and it says, in previous WordPress versions, Metaboxes prevented the, the editor canvas from being iframed. An iframe canvas offers many benefits. What are those benefits? What What is it that we're... Have, have any of you got any intuition on this? If not, we'll just move on. But um, no. I think it's more of uh, they, the, the entities can be treated separately. So okay. one can be updated and refreshed in the background while the other one can do the same thing, but maybe 10 seconds later because you then change something in the Metabox. So it's, it's, it's becoming more of a real life app as you're building and writing and adding content and blocks and stuff in all the different types of meta boxes that you have available. So does this tap into what you were talking about earlier with things like the block bindings API? You'd be able to sort of combine no. things? No? 
No, no, okay. no, no. That's more like uh, if I'm in my Yoast SEO settings uh, and I'm updating and changing stuff there, and uh, I will have a better way of having that being refreshed as I'm doing what I'm doing, while while the editor itself, uh, someone else, could also be uh, in a different way be writing okay. content there. So this okay. in, a, in a way paving the direction for uh, multiple multiple people working on the same type of, uh, type of content. I'm, okay, I'm so assuming. I'm assuming, but yeah, to me that's where we're going. There's a, there's <laughs> that big, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, come on. That was my joke. I was going to do that another twelve times. <laughs> so uh, another uh, big advantage of having um, the blog editor and the, the post editor and the site editor um, being the same interface is that the, a theme or plugin developer can style um, everything like it's what you see is what you get and it's easier to style. If you have um, a, a non iframe thing, you have to do different styles sometimes. Yeah, and it's yeah. sometimes um, the what you see is what you get doesn't work like that. So the, you have different styles on the block editors and the front end and um, having it all in the um, iframe, it makes it much easier for, for both of them um, to, to, to show uh, how the block works. Okay. Um, so that's um, definitely one of them, and all, everything else is kind of streamlined. The, the post editor are pretty much the same component, yeah. And um, what only kind of leaves the post editor is the meta boxes. And now I think they have a good. Uh, they experimented quite a bit with that. What to do with the meta boxes? Because there are uh, quite a few plugins, yeah, like meta boxes or. Um, that rely on the on, on the display of it, um, but now having two two iframes, I think it's a good good way to handle that. Um, um, big, without... I think it's I think we're at that moment where we need you to uh, turn your camera off and on again. Oh, I lost a couple of the only a couple of words that, like the gist of everything that you said came across. So don't worry. Yeah. Oh, Go sorry about. No, no, no. Honestly, just literally a couple of words, and it was fine. Apart from yeah. that, okay. uh, James yeah, Kemp so. dropping in to say, oh, so firstly, Elliot um, likes the zoom out feature. I think that's super cool. Nice UX. Okay, great for complex pages. Yeah, I guess once you like really onto some lengthy page, it, it lends itself really well to that, doesn't it? And then James Kemp says they want to rename blueprints. Any thoughts on that? Do you know what to James, or is they just muting muting the fact that they want to replace the name? I really like the name blueprint. I do too. I, I see zero yeah. need to do any changes to that. Okay. The same yeah, here, the name here. Yeah. Right. Kind of, right. Okay. Yeah. That's it. It has been decided by Dicta. <laughs> That, um, it's not going to change. So don't, don't worry, James. It's all a storm in a teacup. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, like, that seems perfect for me because it literally does what I'm imagining a blueprint does. Yeah. Um, it's got that perfect one-to-one -one mapping in my head of, yeah, so uh, we don't endorse any change at all. Uh, here we go. I've heard, ooh, <laughs> recipes. Yeah, no. <laughs> Look at us all. It's not food, isn't it? It's not It doesn't translate well. It's, it's information and design. A recipe is cooking. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Great. <laughs> I'm not putting ingredients in. That's, that's something else. Uh, uh, James, all I can say is you need to take this important feedback uh, to the people in high places and make yeah, the, sure that it's kept as blue. Not all people do not like any changes, okay? Uh, playgroundy, I think blue. Oh, yeah, okay. What playgroundy well, in the sense of like a child's playground, some sort of. Yeah, but hold child. on, hold on, hold on. There's companies building playgrounds. When they build them, they use blueprints. Nice, you've sold it to me, Remkus. That's okay. all you needed to say. But occasionally, they probably go home and cook as well. Yeah, yeah, um, but they need recipe for that. <laughs> yeah, they bring a packed lunch. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. It's not my idea, says James. Yeah, it's okay. We're not trying to blame you. Don't worry. We don't hold you responsible, but it, if you wanted well, much. a panel, it, it, all you need to do is say, "Well, a hundred percent of the people that I polled said it should be it should <laughs> remain as as blueprint." So uh, there you go, that's it. We've done it. Yeah. So that article carries on. There's loads more in there, and if you are a developer, please. Oh, you go must. To, you must read. Very quickly on the playground as a, as a hit thing that I'd love to see is blueprints in, blueprints out. I'd love this idea <laughs> of having you, you start off by loading your blueprint, you make changes and then the blueprint goes out and the, the almost you can have the scenario. Um, 
if you've ever come across a live CD for a Linux system, a live boot, yeah, I mean, you yeah, plug yeah. in your USB stick or you plug in your CD and it would boot up and let you have Linux on your Windows machine. And mm. It wasn't changing anything until you hit go and then it would wipe the hard drive. I can <laughs> really see a really powerful use case for Playground where you like, you configure it how you like and then you go, right, I'm ready to write it to disk. So um, RMRFs, uh, is that the better name for Blueprints? Is what? No, never mind. Bad joke again. Okay. Oh, it's all acronym jokes with, with Remkus today. I don't know. RF, I'm desperately going to be trying to figure that out during the course of the Can rest of the you say RM? RF? RF? Yeah. RF? He means RM. hard drive. Oh. Remove. Remove. Oh, yeah. like hyphen RM. Yeah. With with forced recursive as well. Do that. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So please, if you are a developer and you haven't stumbled across this, go to uh, developer.wordpress.org. And then in this case, it's forward slash news and then follow it from there. But just sign up for this. Get this in your RSS feed because every month they're going to drop something. And it's, you know, just a ton of what's coming in WordPress. So that's really good. Um, the team at Woo, sorry, WeGlot, well, Woo, WooCommerce and WeGlot have partnered up together. This article is pretty thin on the ground um, in terms of detail, but I'll just read you the, the very first sentence. It says, WeGlot, by the way, which is a translation uh, service so that you can translate your uh, WordPress website and now WooCommerce store uh, into a variety of different languages. It says, WeGlot is excited to announce a new partnership with WooCommerce. WeGlot is now fully integrated with WooCom with bleh, WordPress e-commerce plugin WooCommerce, providing a seamless way to translate your store in just minutes. I don't know uh, how to do that. I didn't watch the video, but it just says, you know, simply add the WeGlot extension via WooCommerce and your WooCommerce store will now be fully translated. Now, it says that in the past tense, like it's going to sort of do it for you and displayed on the language specific subcategories in just a couple of clicks, not being sure how uh, WeGlot works. I can't really tell you about that. But uh, anyway, maybe James, who's in the comments, will know a little bit more. I don't know. Uh, but there's that. Anybody want to add anything? It, it just automatically translate if you uh, if you want that sort of uh, translation. Okay, pretty... so it's like an AI, click a button, it'll translate it type thing. In a way, yeah. Yeah, okay, nice. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. And where's my other articles? Here we go. That one's kind of blank. Um I just thought this was kind of interesting. So we're now in an era where you really are at the 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 point where if you're building client websites, you are going to be able to very, very soon hand over an editing experience to your clients, which kind of matches their expectation. I don't know, if they're just producing text, you could uh, strip out the editor so that it behaves perfectly to that kind of process if you want to do it, oh, I don't know, for... Uh, different user roles or what have you. Um, and uh, Nick <laughs> Nick Tadlock, he's back. Um, with the, no, it's Nick Diego. 15 ways to curate the WordPress editing experience. And uh, this is just a laundry list of 15 ways that you can do exactly that. Modify the, um, the WordPress, the block editor, the site editor. And you can see it's tons of code. You've got to drop in the code, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But here's some examples of the, I'm going to say it, recipes. <clears throat> blueprints so it's things like disabling specific blocks disabling block support disabling user interface for locking blocks disabling the inspector tabs disabling open verse there's lots of disabling uh set the default image size on register blah 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 you get the idea so if you're I, I, in it's gone what is, what is the name of this show uh wp builds and what the, the the this podcast what is the what is its name this week in WordPress, I feel like I'm walking into a trap. What's happened? <laughs> this article is three, more than three months old. Oh, no, but I've only just come across it, so it's going oh. in. Um, well, yeah, you, oh, no, I don't. Um, a certain newsletter that you say that you read, if you would read Remkos. it a little more carefully. Oh, Remkos darn, I'm in evergreen. trouble now. Right. I'm, it is well, evergreen. I, I agree with that. But, yeah, uh, thanks, Big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that, Remkus. It's evergreen. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, the he's right though. It is a bit on the old side, and occasionally we do surface old content. A case in point is me. Yeah. Um, okay. See how I comedied my way out of that awkward moment. Right. Okay. Anyway, this article's a bit stale. Don't bother reading it. Um, and oh, no, tell no, Nick really. Diego to uh, update stuff <laughs> more often. You know, that's all. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Blame Remkus. Okay. What about this one? This is up to date. This <clears> is from last week from Felix. Oh, yes. Okay, right. 
it's a, it's a week out of date. It's not, it's not up to date. You know, I, what I should do is I should do a daily show called This Day in WordPress every day. And oh, I, I don't you, know if the world could handle that. At the either. minute, I would be able to do that easily. It could be this hour in WordPress at the moment, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Okay, and I'm not a big user of AI. Um, and the only time I've really used AI is I've connected things, you know, SaaS services and uh, WordPress plugins and things to chat GPT. That's really my, my only experience. But I know that out there is a whole bunch of different AIs and I can list the names, you know, things like Claude and Anthropic, but I don't really know too much about them. But somebody that does Good and is... Topic is worrying about them is Felix Arntz from the um, performance, I want to say, performance team. And he's a Googler as well. And he's created a plugin uh, called AI Services. And I, I don't know why, Remkus. I have a feeling that you're you're kind of into AI a bit or you like to sort of get in. I don't know. Have I got that wrong? Do you? Yeah, not not in the hardcore way, but oh. I, do, I do more than use it for content uh, generation okay. uh, type of stuff. But um, this is a, this is a nice plugin because it's basically uh, wanting to service um, the connection to the APIs in a unified way. Uh, so anything you need, additional stuff happening in your WordPress site, you can use this as a base. Uh, basically, the the, uh, the the this WordPress plugin introduces central infrastructure, which allows other plugins to make use of its AI capabilities. That is the the key sentence of this plugin. So it enables you to just have this sort of like one stop shop, if you like, and everything sort of binds to that. Yeah, and then you, and, and you build on top of it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it as it's all the hotness at the moment, and um, you know everybody's talking about AI. It seems like a a really a good time to do this. So it's really new. Uh, in fact, it's so new that it's got loads of caveats written all over it. Consider this plugin early access at this point. There are lots of enhancements and things that need to be polished. Don't use it on production. That kind of thing. Uh, so I'll just read. The WordPress plugin introduces uh, central infrastructure, which allows plugins to make use of AI capabilities. It exposes APIs that can be used in various contexts, contexts whether you need to use AI capabilities in server or client-side code. Uh, API agnostic, so you can use Anthropic, Google, OpenAI to learn, uh, to name but a few. And you can use any of them in any way that you wish. So very cool. Thank you, uh, Felix. Anything else on that before I move on? Can just to say, I really like framework-based plugins. Mm. This idea that he's not going, I'm going to go and I'm going to build out this huge, complicated thing with millions of features. Instead, he's gone, well, over time, this landscape's going to change. But we're always going to want to have like a little core thing where we're going to be interacting with these eight. Because ultimately, all this is is a, is a wrapper to interact with a bunch of AI services. Yeah. And then expose those endpoints to other plugins. Um, but I really like that as a look, well, I'm going to start with this really small thing and then you can add your own blocks on. And this is a really good way to develop plugins. Um, and I wish more people would think about it from that perspective. It's, it's fast, it's more secure and simpler. And we can do with simplicity because sometimes we make things ridiculously overly complicated, especially with AI. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, and there it is. You can see it. It is called AI I like Services. I more to say on the topic, by the way. Oh, I apologize. I thought you finished. No, no I'm, <laughs> I more meant like Tim was very eager to start another point uh, of... No, Keep no. going, Tim. No, no, no. I just like that. I, yeah. I, 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 I like the, the idea of the plugin as much as the, um, as, the, as a concept. Yeah, I agree. This is the smarter way to build. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait so long now. Just to make sure that everybody's. <laughs> well, even finished. if somebody wanted to dip their toes into it, speaking. They can, they have a... Has everybody <laughs> finished now? Can I, can I move on? Uh, so there the it is. Thing. Oh, shush. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, okay, so there we go. AI services, very cool in the AI space. Oh, and a, just a great big, this is, uh, I guess, a thank you kind of thing. Uh, Jeff Starr, Plugin Planet, um, he's been producing WordPress plugins for over 10 years. Well, 10 years now, 10-year uh, anniversary for the um, for Plugin Planet. He's got lots and lots of different offerings, things like uh, BBQ, which and he's got the pro versions for all these as well, but uh, BBQ, Banhammer, Black Hole, GA Google Analytics, Simple Ajax Chat, and USP Pro. 
Um, if do you know what? I am about to say something that could be utterly wrong. Didn't Jeff write a book with Chris Coyer back in the day about um, was it Jeff uh, that did that um, digging into WordPress back in like twenty yeah. two yeah. two thousand and eight or something? Was it Jeff? Yeah. yeah. I had a feeling it might be. Oh, great. That's, that's was it, one memory that I've still got left. He, um, he, wrote, he wrote a book. I don't know if it was that book. Yeah. Well, somebody Google it quickly. Digging into WordPress and see if Jeff Starr's name is bound to it with Chris Coyer. I think it was the pair of them. Um, yeah, which I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, good. That sentence will never come out of your lips again. Chat um, says you're right, Nathan. Yeah, that's right. This is the title for this week's episode. No, no, I'll I'll give you that uh, uh credit when that credit is due again. Then. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. You just need uh, to work harder at it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I need to crib your newsletter less. Um, anyway, there you go. So he's offering um a bit of a bit of a giveaway. You can get um money off his licenses as a way of sort of celebrating. Uh, getting to 10 years and uh, a million and a half users, a real success story in WordPress. And and I feel like, I don't know, he's just one of these people that puts out the right stuff in the right way. I, d I don't know what that means, but there's just something about him which I really like. Uh, right, we're closing it out. This is another thing in WooCommerce. Woo. Uh, brands is now available. Again, I'm not a WooCommerce user, but my understanding is that the brands feature, so, you know, the ability to literally create. Have you never bought anything in a store that turned oh. out to be a WooCommerce store? Uh, yeah, probably. When you are yeah. a WooCommerce user. Yeah, well, there you go. All right. Uh, I meant back end, uh, uh, kind of WordPress y WooCommerce. User. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting schooled this episode by Remkus. It's good. I, I like it. Um, but the brands feature, which used to be uh, commercial, is now being rolled into WooCommerce Core. So this uh, idea to I don't know, create, manage brands and assign them to products and things like that. And it says here it's similar to categories. Uh, it's completely free. So that's quite nice. Right. I'm on a bit of a rush now because we are running out of time. Um, Birgit wanted me to mention this one. We're very fast. This number is tantalizingly close to 1,000. A bit of a milestone, right? Absolutely. Who was, was it big? It was somebody else the one that put this in the show notes. I can't remember. No, no, it was me. Okay. It was me. Do you want to add anything? No, to it? no, I I really like the the variety of the, all the blocks themes that come out now. And having a thousand in there, I think uh, a lot of people will, will find a good um, fit for their new website. Uh, and even if they say, okay, I want to change over um, from, from a classic theme to a block theme, there's uh, plenty of choices now. I uh, really like it. We are two two themes away from a thousand, so it's kind of really cool. Yeah, maybe uh, you never know. By the end of by the end of this week, we'll have eclipsed that. But I do remember at the beginning, it was like in single digits, and then it was in the low double digits, and it never felt like it was going to tick up. And I think Matt's intuition or inspiration was that it was going to get to five thousand by the end of oh, I don't know, twenty oh one or something. Yeah. And it never yeah. never quite gained that momentum. But it feels, I haven't looked at that number for ages, but obviously it's at some point started to rise. And so a thousand is a pretty credible number. Yeah, It's getting all uh, a lot more mature. So it makes way more sense to build now in the last uh, 12 months than, than yes. before, in my mind. I, I'm going to show my ignorance. Does being classified as a block theme mean you're, it's full FSE? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The yeah. tag is actually full site editing. Uh, you're saying yeah um so you know you can drill down by uh different features and subject matter and mm -hmm. things like that but there's anyway you've got a thousand to choose from so definitely getting to the point where there's going to be something which is very likely to hit what you want and obviously there's a lot of commercial ones out there uh, to look at as well right we really are getting close uh da, 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 da. This is very, very cool. Um, for the longest period of time, we kept talking about how the plugin review team was just basically under the hammer. I know that a lot of the processes have now been kind of automated and there's been a lot of education going on to make sure that the team know how to expedite uh, plugins that are being reviewed. But I don't know if it's still on zero, but we got down to zero for a period of time. There were no... Um, plugins that were waiting to be reviewed so if you are a creator of a brand new plugin um now's the time because yeah, it'll be done by friday uh kudos to the team because yeah, that's an amazing indeed. feat yeah pretty amazing uh they're all getting checked by the i think it's called the plugin checker 
is that it just called plugin checker anyway plugin so check. there's a lot of automated stuff which i yeah. think has weeded out a lot of the 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 sort of headspace that was needed to get that work done so brilliant and david perez i've just screenshotted something on twitter uh there or x sorry and again this was not mine so i don't know who posted this, this one. was mine okay tim tell me what this is uh, hosting tests okay so basically uh many years ago now uh a hosting team was generated uh, for WordPress to basically support WordPress in various hosting companies. And one of the things they wanted to do was come up with like a common testing mechanism to make sure things work across a multitude of hosts. Um, and this is now being expanded a lot more. Um, there were some tweaks and changes that have been made. I basically wanted to mainly say, put it on to celebrate that this team's success is going on behind the scenes because uh, I think it's really important what we're doing, making sure that because WordPress has to work in some very strange places and there's, the hosting team deals with some very weird setups. Yeah, I was talking to, um, who was I talking to? I was talking to, oh my goodness me, this is so bad. I can't remember their name. Not him. Andy Fragan. Uh, the other day about the automatic rollbacks feature for automatic updates. And he was saying there were so many weirdy edgy case, edge cases for different hosting environments and things that were, I don't know, using virtual box and things like that. Just so many edge cases. Right, that's it. I think we've done it. And I think we've all got through it with a certain degree of, you know, not not destroying ourselves. So well done, team. Um, we got through it. There was a couple of nice comments. I mean, there was a couple of comments that came through basically saying, look, get into the subject. You know, if we don't talk about it, we, we won't solve it. And then there were other comments saying, look, nice, you're dodging it. So anyway, that's the way we do it over here. So, um, yeah, this has been this year in WordPress, Remkus, just so that you're satisfied, you know, as we've done the whole year, <laughs> year 2024. And I, I think I'm going to call this one automatic updates. Not Remkus is right? No, that's never what it's going to be called, Remkus. There's <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a very little chance of, of that. No. Oh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. But um, before we end it, firstly, a great big thank you to all of my guests. And I, I appreciate your good humor, trying to get through that stuff and, uh, and being cordial with each other. And, and I appreciate all the nice comments that came through. That's really nice as well. Only one thing to do, and you know what that is. Mm, it's to stick those hands in the air. Oh, yeah. No. Well, it's Tim, what the heck? Tim, come on, Tim. All right, okay, okay. That's no, I don't know which one I'm going to go for there. That's fine. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week. Hopefully, the sky will not have fallen in. But uh, thank you for joining us on this episode of this week in WordPress. What is about to happen is about one minute and nineteen of cats, dogs, and sheep. Just to calm you down, it's the sky's not Thanks, falling Tim. in. Everything's going to be okay. I'll see you soon. Thanks. Oh. Mm -hmm.